we're moving to Abuja, where the suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, will report at headquarters of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Abuja, today, the 9th of January, 2024. The president tasked a panel headed by the coordinating minister of the economy and minister of finance to, among other functions, conduct a comprehensive diagnostic on the financial architecture and framework of the social investment programs with a view to conclusively reform the relevant institutions and programs. The suspended Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation was denied access to President Tinubu in Asurok. Edu's suspension followed widespread criticism after a leaked memo on December 20th revealed that she directed the Accountant General of the Federation, Ulua Toin Madein, to transfer um, a sum of 585 million naira to a private account owned by one Onielu Bridget. Uh, to have this conversation with us this morning is Dr. Dayo Kayode. He's joining us over the phone. Good morning, Dr. Dayo. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning and uh, and uh, welcome to a new year whereby I wish Nigerians will see the kind of hope they have been hoping for. Mm. All right, let's move forward. Um, a lot of reactions have trailed uh, the suspension of, uh, uh, of course, Edu, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, uh, Beta Edu. Reactions have continued to trail it, like I said, on social media and on the mainstream media. It's been trending since, you know, the mid of December 2023 and up until now. Uh, yesterday, she was denied access to the president. I wouldn't know what the meeting was supposed to be about, seeing that she had already been suspended. But I'd like to get your reaction to the suspension, you know, that was given to the minister. How do you react to that? Yes. Uh, thank God that we are having this conversation this early year. I mean, this early part of the year. You will remember, in the later part of last year, we were discussing about some of these intervention funds meant to ameliorate the sufferings of Nigerians. Mm. And I was giving you a quick, ex I gave you a quick extra of what has been happening. It should be uh, this other one for where uh, I do is a series of, you know, and I told you that those departments are just there to be siphoning our money. And I think this has giving credence to that my submission then mm. you could see that within few months of coming to power of edu how much it has been viewed of her to have been allegedly stolen from our house when the investigation goes on you see that it's going to even be more than this. I can tell you, it will be more than this. However, however, it is a good thing that she has been suspended from office for ESCC to be able to unravel all that led to that. Moving on, you can now see, I mean, Nigeria can now see that we have no reason to be poor in this country. Let them extreme other ministries. Let them extreme other ministries. We will be able to also unravel the rot that is also going on there. Especially, especially our NNPC. Mm. Especially our NNPC. The new government have always been making we Nigerians to pay for money being stolen by office holders. Now imagine those people that are supposed to get this money now. 
Tell me how much you'll be getting to them. Tell me. Okay, but how much? Uh, Wait, Dr. Dr. Dario. Dr. Dyer, you do you do know that the Minister of Interior actually came out to give, you know, a, a level of explanations to why these monies were paid to into uh, paid into a private account uh, part of which I, I believe is so that it would get to the people who uh, actually need these monies or the, uh, the right persons that it was supposed to get to in a quicker manner do you agree with that no you see he's not he's not trying to abuse the sensibility of nigeria mm. because a minister, I was informing somebody yesterday. The person said, I say, you know, she's not a lawyer. She's supposed to have gone through a lawyer to do certain things. I said, no. As an educated, as an educated and uh, highly exposed individual, mm. she should have known that there are guidelines, let down guidelines. That, that she should follow in distributing this money. Are you supposed to distribute it from a personal account or from the account of the Federation? I mean, you are the one saying, are you supposed to do that? You have gone against the Constitution which you have sworn to uphold. When, when you do that, what do we call that? Mm. It is nothing other than felony. Nothing other than felony. But my question is, when the investigation has been concluded, will there be any punitive measure to be meted on that? All right, don't because we have seen several investigations in the past. And after the investigation, nothing happens. And that is why we continue to have people all right, doctor, you are also aware yes. that there are various schools of thought, regardless of the fact that investigation is still ongoing, that there are various uh, schools of thought that um, the minister herself did not in any way go against the set laws that is guiding the civil service, that perhaps what she might have gone against is the fact that there is a cap to what she can actually transfer per time. And of course, going beyond that, she needed to, you know, get some level of approval or clearance from certain, you know, department before that can be done. Do you think that that was actually what she did that contravened that particular transaction? We've just been a break with uh, Dr. Dyer. Hopefully he joins us uh, over the phone again. But there, there's been a lot of schools of thought, actually, mm. like you said, Josh. And mm. part of it is how that this young lady is actually the youngest sitting um, um, minister. minister that yeah. we've had for over a long period of time. And, of course, in this particular cabinet, mm. she's the youngest at 37 years old. And, you know, it kind of raised a lot of questions around the not too young to run bill, around the, you know, the whole um, conversations around giving young persons more opportunity to participate in governance and leadership. And do you, do you agree that this has to do with age? It, or is it a personality trait? Or is it an age bracket problem. I don't know if you get where, where I'm going to with this do. question. I absolutely uh, do. Would another younger person in this situation handle issues the way that she has or done things the way that she has? Or, or do you think an older person wouldn't have made such mistakes? You get you get the comparison. Do. How do you react to that? Yeah, you see, um, quite very interesting that she's one of the youngest, if not mm. the youngest, mm -hmm. you know, who have ever, you know, um, pilot that particular ministry mm. and of course it has no issue with the age the age is, in this case now does not in any way you know make any difference because what tends to be the guiding principle mm. is what needs to be followed to hold a public office of that nature you've got to know that you need to uphold the highest level of standard when it comes to integrity and of course transparency and accountability mm. so when you do not have all of these values 
whether you are above the age that she is or below that you will mm. definitely fall below standard yeah. so for us what we're looking at is was she guided by these principles mm. you know which are part of the things that you know drives an individual in that capacity all right i think all dr right, d think is back. back on the line okay, hello me, dr d thank you so much for joining us once again can you now hear let me? me ask Josh a question. All right, please go ahead. Josh, sir, are you coming from the angle of validating the violations of uh, Governor F. Governor Bakinzu that kept government money in government house? There are, there are, there are guidelines telling, telling any civil servant, any government official on how to keep and disburse government money. Because in a, in, a, in a society that there are no rules and regulations, there won't be anything like this. She had committed felony. Hmm. Nothing other than that. There is no amount of uh, of the defense she can come up with because she herself wrote a letter to the Accountant General's office. And the Accountant General, who is more experienced than her, who understands, who understands the essence of guidelines to keeping and disbursing. The Commonwealth of Nigeria. The judgments are up totally. Totally. Mm. And, and listen, the other lady that have been uh, suspended earlier said that she even decided to keep the rest of money from Edu because of all that she had stolen. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't want her to steal Nigeria so, to the point of whipping. Are you also aware? Are you also aware of another of uh, uh, another one on the social media yesterday, whereby uh, 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 an explanation, or rather, uh, Nigeria to have been fed with the news as regards how much has been given to some people as contracts and we we are aware of those people some names are mentioned uh, uh, minister of the uh, war minister uh, Udu was mentioned uh, uh one of the people's brother was mentioned some other people were mentioned being given contracts what millions? What millions? And what are they able to do? What are they able to do with their money? These are issues. So let the investigation go on. Let them go deeper than what has happened now to some other ones that she has even committed while in office. Then apart from that, let us also have a deep forensic investigation into most of these ministries and departments because Nigeria are suffering. I want to know where all these monies are. All right. We want all these money to be brought back to our company so as to ameliorate the excruciating suffering that Nigeria presently are experiencing. All right, you have just called for a, a further look into several other ministries, um, you know, financially to find out what's really going on there. Do you see a will to go ahead and do that by the government of President Bola Tinubu? And of course, this whole situation surrounding uh, Beta Edu and the ministry that she represents, uh, what do you think it pretends or what do you think it makes for uh, Bola Tinubu's government? Well, uh, you know, in democracy, in democracy, positions are being given to to satisfy 
political patronage. Mm. And to that extent, political leaders always find it difficult to expose various forms of infractions by such people until until when there are visible squabbles among them and then one decides among them to just spill the beans to that is the way they know they cannot cover it they now call for a group and that's why i said the other time after the group what happens because during the group a lot of kind of words will be opened up. Look at that what's the issue now. I mean, look at the administration issue. Mm. That was what led to that of that And then it is easily to some other people. Because the military has been mentioning names. And at the end of the day, some big weeks will be mentioned. And what happens? We tactically overrun the case. So it is often difficult for us to get to a meaningful conclusion of some of these rules. The only thing, the only thing that we get from it is, uh, yes, this one has to win. See how much she has to win. Mm. We have to okay, let it go. Let it go. Because Individuals, individuals cannot punish them except when you go through the guidelines. So, for them, we thank God that this thing has been exposed now. I won't say that. It is now an indication, it is now an indication that Nigeria, Nigerians that are expecting food are not likely to see any hope anywhere because we have a whole load of money mongers mm. money mongers in government you know sometimes when you when you look at some of them talking when you look at some of them talking you look at them with your inner eye to to the inside of what they are saying you know that they are telling they are not telling us the truth they're not telling us the truth. All right, doctor. Very soon, very soon, we will also, we also hear of rot in part of this, in the immigration, in the customs. Very soon, we'll be hearing it. Where do we go from here? All right, doctor, earlier before now, let's just say six months back, Bola Tinumbu boasted that um, his cabinet will be filled with technocrats. You know, persons who will fill in the various parts of this cabinet to be able to drive the economy. But of course, six months down the line, we are seeing, in quotes, technocrats who are carrying out high volume of corrupt practices, one of which is the Edo that we're mentioning right about now. But of course, he has taken, he has taken the bull by the horn to make sure that he will spare no one. Because he said it earlier that if you fail to perform six months after your appointment, you would not be spared. Now, see what has just happened. For him to have risen above the occasion to be able to do the needful by taking the political will to suspend the minister and allow investigation to continue, don't you think that there is a likelihood that things could get better if he continues in this trajectory? Okay, number one. Tell me who and who are the political in that government. Is it Anaki? Is it Eddie? Is it a, is it a, this man in charge of um, in charge of uh, immigration? Is it the one is it the one in charge of power? Is it the one in charge of communication? No tell me. Which of them? You cannot I take away the fact you cannot take away the fact that Tunji you know, Ojo drove a very good reform when it comes to the immigration service. So you cannot completely take that fact out. When you are talking of reforms, when you are talking of reforms, where are the results? 
And that's why I said the other time, Josh, there's a difference between saying something and there's a difference between making it a reality of which even the president has done. And we bring the technocrats that we, that we know be putting their hands in the government of Nigeria. What have we been saying now? So what have we seen? We are the technocrats. What has happened to what has happened to our life? Power. Tell me now, I don't have power in my house. Try yesterday, try yesterday, no power in my office. Alright. Tell me. Now presently, presently, we are not even enjoying we are not even enjoying sufficient uh, sufficient uh, fuel in the country. Look at how much it's selling for. Look at you see coming up. How about economy? What is, what is happening to our economy? Look at the exchange now. Three weeks ago, there was that euphoria. The Naira is now going for nine something uh, to the dollar. And then look at this city. Let us see the sustainability. Let us see it. But look how it's happening today. One, one, one thousand two hundred and fifty Naira to a dollar. No, tell me. Dr. D. Where are those technocrats that I have brought? Are we not supposed to have been seen? Are we not supposed to have been seen the effect? All right, Doctor D. I, I, I believe a, a good percentage. Why they are not using our money, Doctor D? I believe a good, a great percentage of Nigerians, Doctor D, will agree with you on most of the points that you've made this morning, uh, uh, especially the part where you did mention that you hope this hammer that has started to fall, starting from the uh, Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, falls on every other ministry, so that you know we can be able to weed out uh, these elements that kind of break down the economy and the Nigerian um, democracy. Of course, uh, our time is up hopefully we'll be able to further this conversation of course it is an unfolding story as it unfolds we'll be glad to have you again to further have this conversation thank you so much for joining us on the show this morning we appreciate your time dr d thank you very much my pleasure being with you on your platform this morning enjoy the rest of your day and you too uh, it's, it's uh, like I said, an unfolding conversation, Josh. Uh, mm. And like we were saying when, you know, we had that break with uh, the phone about whether it's a matter of age or, uh, you know, the generation where someone is coming from. Some schools of thought have also kind of hung it on the gender of the person uh, in question. And I feel like that is a very myopic way of viewing this because we have had other female ministers in the past who have continued continued even till today to make nigeria proud and do i need to mention names there are a lot of them talk about um um Ngozi, um Ezekwesele. talk about dora, dora akunili talk about ndi okereke on uk there are a lot of them women in you know leadership positions even today that are doing amazing so i don't think it's about gender or age or generation or whatever um if you are a good person, if you are a disciplined person, it's about what drives if you. If you, if you, exactly. If you, it depends on the person that you are. How, how far have you come? You know, building your personality in the positives. Uh, whether you are seventy years old or you're forty-five, or you are a man or you're a woman or whatever you identify as, it doesn't matter. It, it's the person on the inside of you that will determine how you function in the office that you find yourself. And it is unfortunate that. As young persons in Nigeria are beginning to wake up to, you know, uh, pay attention and stop being uh, very um, apathetic to politics and leadership in this season where young people are taking up responsibilities or somebody would smear the young generation like this. It is very unfortunate. And of course, um, yeah. yeah, your point you've just, you know, marshaled out are very germane. And of course, what, you know, going forward, I think the BAT administration, I mean, Bola Metinobo's administration should look into is trying to also imbibe the idea of digitalization. Mm -hmm. Because come to look at it, if someone does not have anything that drives an individual, even if they put that sum of money, I can even give you 10 million naira share around. If that money is not digitalized in such a way that you can be able to account for it, there's no way you will not fall. Exactly. So we should start looking at a state where every aspect of you know the ministry, as long as it has to do with 
impacting into the lives of Nigerians when it comes to poverty alleviation and mm. all of that. Such money sh should be driven digitally. I think the world has long gone beyond, you know, um, says, manual I mean, means of doing sharing money anything. by hand. Anything. I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't even have to sense. be finances. The manual means of doing anything at all is way behind us. I feel like as a, as a nation yeah. and the nation that we are, Africa-wise, sure. worldwide, sure. we we deserve. We have. We are supposed to have gotten to that point where we're able to digitize a lot of things. True. Younger, smaller countries in Africa have been able to achieve this. Why haven't we been able to do that? It if it's not corruption that has eaten way deep it tells into the, the system, yeah. yeah, the motive because behind it's not it. like we don't have what it takes. We do have what of it course. takes. Best brains in tech, best brains in finances. We have them. Why can't we digitize these things? Uh, but of course, as it unfolds, we'll bring you more information. I brand daybreak. When we return, we'll bring you Dennis Ofik for some sports updates. Afcon is on the way. How do you react? We'll find out when he joins us. Stay with us.